Welcome back, or welcome to my video. This is Brad Waller, and I am coming to you from my 1967 Chevelle. And today's video, I think I will talk about just one piece of my volunteering, which is the PTA. Most of you, I expect, when you think of a PTA, you think of the stereotypical stuff. A whole bunch of moms, bake, bake sales, you know, cattiness, all the stuff that you see on TV and movies where the PTA moms are always the, you know, the, the moms that, you know, want to be in charge of everything and do this and do that. And yeah, there may be pieces of that, but, you know, the media really, you know, they're an easy target. So it's easy for them to you know, come up with a stereotype and say, that's who I'm going to have as my character. Yes, you know, the, the pushy mom, that's going to be the PTA president, and she's going to do this and do that, tell everybody what to do. And there really isn't a whole lot of that in the PTA. You don't go around telling people what to do, because the PTA is just like any other volunteer-led organization. You work together. You know, if anything, I think there's a... Uh, lack of telling people what to do and there's issues of you know not delegating yeah I see I see people get burnt out because they don't delegate and they do too much themselves so let me explain basically what the PTA is the PTA is an advocacy organization they are a membership organization and they are a leadership training organization the PTA has, since its inception, advocated for children. So the mission of the PTA is to basically do good things and make it better for all children. Not just member children, not just kids in our school. This is for all children and families. So to do that, that's how you advocate. That's why you advocate, how you change things. You talk to the people in government and you change laws. We have kindergarten, mostly because of work the PTA did. We have school lunches because of work the PTA did. So there's a lot of things that are just basic that everybody knows and expects because it's just what's always been there that came from the PTA. So that's the advocacy portion of what we do. Now membership. How do you advocate? Well, if you're a bunch of moms at a school, or parents, I should say, really, it shouldn't be sexist, since I'm the one that always complains about them talking about moms only. Um, you have a bunch of parents at a school that want something to happen, and they go off and talk to their elected representatives and say, this is bad, we need to change it, here's our ideas. They'll go, all right, fine, here's you know five people. If on the other hand, as a membership organization, those advocates go and say, I represent 800,000 members in the state of California, and this is an issue, and this is a problem, and here's our solution for it. There's a whole lot more power you've got when you've got 800,000 people behind you, or hopefully soon enough, a million people behind you, then you've got a lot more power to get things done. And it's not even at the state level, you know. This is the state PTA. The California state PTA has, at the moment, from last year, just under 800,000 members. Um, our goal is, within the next two years, to get over a million members. So this, that's, that's just our state. I'm not talking about national, but locally, if you've got somewhere close to 100,000 members in the Southern California area. So I can go to my state senator and say, I'm representing the voice of 100,000 of your constituents, and they want this. That can work. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle is the leadership development. And no organization can sustain itself without leaders. And you don't want to get stale. You don't want to have the same leaders 
in the same positions for all time. So it just doesn't work when you have the same people doing the same jobs or rotating their jobs over and over. So what we need to do is we need to find people and develop them and make them the leaders of the organization for the future. Well, that's kind of embarrassing. Something happened. I think my video actually went too long and I missed the end of it. I was talking about our leadership training at the state PTA in California. We do leadership training with our state convention, which is once per year, but we also put on regional leadership trainings in the North, the South, and the Central California. And many of our districts have their own training that they also do once per year or even twice per year. So there's a lot of places where the PTA is set up to do leadership development and training for all of the new volunteers, teaching them how to be a president, how to be a treasurer, how to be an auditor, how to be a historian, basically all the positions, how to do it, how to follow the PTA procedures, how to not get in trouble, that kind of thing. And that's one of the advantages of PTA is because we're a larger organization, we figured out everything. So we know how to keep you from getting in trouble We've got bylaws, we've got rules, we've got insurance, lots of things that cover you that you don't get if you're just a regular parent organization. And with that, I'm going to sign out. Brad Waller, have a nice day. Bye.